All right, Shalom, I'm going to begin this lesson by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah, Waha Rakah Kudash, which in the ancient Hebrew tongue would be the correct names of the Heavenly Father, His beloved Son, and the Holy Spirit. Also, I would like to give double honors to my teachers, the head apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much due honors and respect to the sense of brethren out there that's also laboring in his work. And as always, I want to say Shalom to the believers, you know, the Akim as well as the Akwath, which will be you brothers along with the sisters that subscribe to this truth as well. So, yeah, this lesson right here is going to be somewhat of an effort, if you will, to comfort those amongst you believers out there, you know, in your pursuit to salvation, which have led you on this path, which we all have embarked on, which can be considered a very turbulent one and one that is froth with danger, if you will. And that's pursuant to the book of Second Ezra, the seventh chapter, where it tells you how this path was laid in a dangerous place to fall, where there would be a deep water on one side and a fire on the other, which symbolizes the tribulation that comes with this walk. See, nobody ever said coming into this truth and enduring, all right, and walking this walk, this path, would be easy. Matter of fact, let's start off right there real quick before we get into this lesson. This is the book of Matthew, the seventh chapter, and starting at the 13th verse, it says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. <laughs> and many and many there be which go in thereat. Yeah, and this would be concerning the masses of your people. Which, by the way, when you go into that word mass, it literally translates to death. So for whatever ideologies or philosophies or doctrines you people out there subscribe to, well, that's a path that you have embarked on. Which when you consider a path, you know, or a road or street, it all has a destination, man. <laughs> See? So whatever path you embark on, your destiny awaits. Which in this case, this broad path is the way that leadeth to destruction. See? And many there be which go in thereat. See that? Verse 14, it says, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, or the path, which leadeth unto life, <laughs> and few there be, that find it. Yeah, and that's another thing. You can't gloss over the fact that the Lord allowed you access to this truth. <laughs> you know, to be nourished and, and built up. That's why this truth is compared to a woman, which there's a saying in the world, <laughs> a woman is like a bus. She come every 15 minutes. Well, guess what? This doesn't apply to the woman uh, wisdom, Sophia. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity here. Why? Because this understanding leads to life. But the path, you know, that leads you to that everlasting life is narrow. Let's read this again. It says, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way, see, which leadeth unto life. Real quick, let's click on this word narrow. Strong's G 2346. Thlebo. Thlebo. Yeah, and that would be the pronunciation in the Greek for this word narrow. And it says to press <laughs> as grapes. Press hard upon. Yeah, you're going to be pressed in this truth. See? It says a compressed way. Yeah, so the way that leads to salvation is compressed, meaning it's uncomfortable. See? Versus that broad path. You know, when you have a, a room, you know, to stretch and unwind, then pretty much there's a, a margin for error. All right? Versus that compressed way, that narrow path. Really, there's no room for error. Okay? This walk is a straightened walk. You know, there's accountability now. You know, there's standards when you come into this truth. You don't come into this truth, you know, just to unwind and let it all hang out. See, it says a narrow, straightened, contracted, 
It says to trouble, <laughs> to trouble, afflict, distress, trouble, afflict, distress. These are some of the words that comes with walking this walk. So when the scripture speaks about that narrow path, that straight gate, well, it's going to be riddled with trouble, afflictions, distress. And that's a contrast to what Christianity presents. You know, the approach is, you know, if you serve the Lord, then everything is going to be laid out for you. Your house is going to be in order, your women, you know, your children. You know, you have money to set up a soft landing for your kids and their kids after that. When the fact of the matter is, when you return to your how about Shemeh Hawashah, you're going to be afflicted. You're going to be chastised. You got to remember, we are not to be celebrated here, man. It's not as if we doing the most high favor. We greatly offended by trespassing the law, statutes, and commandments of your how about Shemeh Hawashah. So in returning, <laughs> we're going to be chastised. Matter of fact, let's get that real quick before we continue. Right here. In the book of Jeremiah, the 30th chapter. And the 11th verse, it says, For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee. Yeah, and this will be the Lord speaking to his elect. And for those of you out there who have eyes to see, who have been given a glimpse, if you will, insight concerning the be-all, end-all, well, we know when the smoke clear and the dust settled, the only spirits that's going to see the salvation of our Lord, Yahweh Shah, would be the elect. So this is who the Heavenly Father, through His Son, is speaking to right here. Again, it says, For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee. See, though I make a full end of all nations, with that I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee. Yeah, so again, the Lord said He's going to preserve His elect. No matter where you was driven to or scattered throughout the world, though the Lord make a full end of those nations, he will not make a full end of thee. Meaning he will preserve, he will have a remnant. See? But it goes on to say, but I will correct thee, <laughs> see, but I will correct thee in measure and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. See? Let's read this again. It says, for I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee, Though I make a full end of all nations whither I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee, but <laughs> I will correct thee in measure. See, but I will correct thee in measure, meaning each and every individual have their own portion of chastising. You know, certain brothers might be well off financially, but the Lord will visit them by, you know, taking away their kids, their women, you know. The Lord might plague them physically with different ailments. See that? Then on the flip side, you might have certain brothers that's healthy, you know, but the Lord might plague them financially. Or whatever, you know, way the Lord choose to chastise us. See, let's read this again. It says, but I will correct thee in measure, see, <laughs> and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. See that? So this is actually what contributes to the comfort understanding that the lord will chastise us man you know he will not leave us all together unpunished you know he will correct us in measure you know according to your threshold for pain if you will nevertheless you're going to be chastised see matter of fact let's grab that real quick before we continue Because you might have one to say, hold up, <laughs> how does knowing the Lord will chastise you contributes to you being comforted? Well, simply put, if for nothing else, the Lord chastising you proves that he loves you. You know, case in point, you can take your kid to the playground and it can be, you know, plenty of children playing and they can all be going off but the only one you're going to visit is your child. Why? Because he's yours, man. You know, or if you consider the dynamic between a shepherd and his sheep. If the sheep get out of line, the shepherd is not going to gently bring the sheep back into the fold. No, he's going to use that staff and he's going to knock them over the head. <laughs> See? Even when you consider the idea of being cleansed or refined, that's a violent act, man. 
you throw your clothes in the washing machine, it tumbles, you know? Or if you refine gold, that's a violent act. But it's all an effort to cleanse you. But ultimately, it proves that the owner of whatever object or uh, material they might wash or whatever possession they might have by them polishing it up, refining it, or cleansing it, it proves that they have love for that particular possession. So it's no different with the Heavenly Father through His Son and His elect. See? It's the book of Proverbs, the third chapter, and starting at the 10th verse. It says, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. My son despise not the chastening of the Lord, see? Neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, <laughs> see? For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as the father the son in whom he delighteth. See that? So if the Lord delight in you, then certainly he's going to correct you, man. He's going to polish you up. And that's the process, you know, in returning to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashem and Yahweh Shah, you're going to be chastised, which is nothing more than the Lord polishing you up, the Lord refining you, see? Which brings me right here. To the book of Ecclesiasticus, the second chapter. And starting at the first verse. It says, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Yeah, and this word temptation here translates to suffering. So coming into this thing, you have to prepare yourself to catch hell. And who's going to brief you? Who's going to be the one to prep you, if you will, to prepare you? Well, it starts with our Lord Yahweh Shai. Remember, our Lord asked, who was it, James and John? Was they able to drink of that cup? So he was prepping them you know, for the temptations that comes with serving him, where we continue in that legacy. Here at Great Millstone, we're not going to shy away from presenting, you know, this thing to you in its rawest form. All right, we're going to give it to you straight up and down and present the seriousness that comes along with following our Lord, Yahweh Shah. There's a story in the gospel where the disciples were set to follow our Lord Yahweh Shah to Jerusalem, and I believe it was Thomas, he made the statement, yeah, let's go and die with the Lord. Why did he make that statement? Because Yahweh Shah was the most controversial man in history, man. So to serve our Lord means you have to prepare to partake in his sufferings. You have to be ready for the demonization that comes with it, the hate that comes with it. Our Lord Yahweh Shah said himself, if they hate you, just know they hated me first. See? So it's our job to prep you, to prepare you, versus these self-proclaimed leaders, you know, amongst Israel and their irresponsible approach. They have you think coming into this Israelite thing is a festive one. You know, you see they pass over where they celebrate. And a lot of you guys don't know what you're involved in. You have no idea of the severity that comes with the lining and associating yourself with being an Israelite. Not knowing that the so-called white man is set to rise up against you thus fulfilling the prophecy spoken of in the book of Revelation, the 12th chapter and the 12th verse. Well, that happened to the ministry of our Lord, Yahweh Shah, 2,000 years ago, man. So to follow our Lord means there's going to be temptation, sufferings, man. See? And when these things happen, you shouldn't marvel. Why? Because you have been prepped. You have been warned. Matter of fact, let's grab that real quick and we're going to go back. It's the book of 1 Peter, the 4th chapter, and the 12th verse. It says, Beloved, yeah, and this will be concerning the believers of our Lord, Yahweh Shah, the elect. All right? It says, Beloved, think it not strange <laughs> concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Yeah, let's read this again. It says, Beloved, Think it not strange, meaning marvel not, concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Yes, so when certain things arise in our life, we marvel not, understanding the conditions of the battle. This comes with the walk. 
And how do we know that? We was prepped, we was warned by our teachers, and our teachers was warned by their teachers. And ultimately, our Lord Yahweh Shah warned us all. And that's pursuant to the book of Luke, the 16th chapter, where the Lord said to count the cost. <laughs> all right, so when you go back here again, to the book of Ecclesiastes, the second chapter, and again, starting at the first verse, it says, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright, yeah, meaning get your mind right, and constantly endure, and make not haste in time of trouble. Yeah, when it seems as if everything is crumbling around you, you might lose, you know, your job, you know, your old friends might separate you from their company. They might call you crazy, that guy's in a cult. Look, make not haste, you are not to look for the first exit out, man. See? Verse 3, cleave unto him. Yeah, that's why our Lord Yahweh Shah said to hold fast to that which thou hast. Meaning this truth, man. <laughs> See? Cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. <laughs> Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. See? And that happened to Job. Okay? When our Lord visited Job, and try him, he brought him low to a lower state. And that's the natural maturation, if you will. All right, in order to be exalted, you have to be brought low. See? Verse 5, it says, For gold is tried in the fire, <laughs> for gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men, <laughs> and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Yeah, let's read this again. It says, for gold is tried in the fire, which this gold is concerning the elect. It says, an acceptable man <laughs> in the furnace of adversity. So to be accepted by the Mosai means you have to be tried. All right? You're going to face adversity. So when these things happen to you, then cheer up, man. You should actually rejoice. Why? Because now you know you have been accepted. See? Now with that established... Who is the one that's bringing <laughs> the adversity? Who is the one that's refining you? Well, it's none other than our Lord, Yahweh Shah. <laughs> and that's outlined right here. In the book of Matthew, the third chapter and the 11th verse, it says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Yeah, and this is John the Baptist speaking, right? It says, but he that cometh after me <laughs> is mightier than I. And this is obviously concerning our Lord, Yahweh Shah. It says, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. Meaning, John was acknowledging that he couldn't walk in Yahweh Shah's shoes. See? It says, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. <laughs> he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit and with fire. See, so the Lord is cleansing us. That's what it means to baptize you. The Lord is cleansing us by his Holy Spirit and with fire. And that fire is in the form of the trials, you know, the tribulations that comes with this narrow path that we have embarked on. And guess what? This was prophesied. <laughs> this was all prophesied. See, which brings me right here. to the book of Malachi, the third chapter. And starting at the first verse, it says, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And that's concerning John the Baptist. Okay? It says, And the Lord whom ye seek <laughs> shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. Verse 2, But who may abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appeareth, for he is like a refiner's fire, <laughs> for he is like a refiner's fire and like fullest soap. See? So our Lord Yahweh Shah, in one of his many titles, is a refiner's fire, meaning it's Yahweh Shah himself who's refining us. See that? Verse 3, it says, And he shall sit, <laughs> and he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver. See, that he may offer unto the Lord 
an offering in righteousness. So it's our Lord Yahweh Shah himself who's refining us. See that? So when you go back here again. To the book of Matthew, the third chapter, and again the eleventh verse, it says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now, real quick, let's click on this word baptize. Strong's G907. Baptizo. Baptizo. Yeah, and that would be the pronunciation in the Greek for this word baptize, and it says to dip repeatedly. <laughs> to dip repeatedly. And remember, we read in the book of Ecclesiastes, the second chapter, where the scriptures call for us to constantly endure. So in this walk, you're going to be faced with adversity repeatedly. See? It says to dip repeatedly, to immerse, to submerge, <laughs> to cleanse by dipping or submerging, to wash, to make clean. And again, when you consider the process of cleansing or washing anything, it could be considered a violent act. <laughs> Although the results is what matter, yet the process could be considered rough. See, it says to cleanse by dipping or submerging, to wash, to make clean with water, to wash oneself bathe. Now, remember John the Baptist said he would baptize you with water, but there's one who come after him who is mightier than he, who would baptize you with fire. See that? It says to overwhelm, to overwhelm, and being submerged in this fire, you know, going through these fiery trials at times can be overwhelming. Being in this truth can drive you to the brinks of insanity, man. <laughs> considering the things you have to endure, which again is not, you know, only reserved to financial problems or, you know, even external problems in the form of being, you know, ailed with certain ailments, right? Internally, man, you can be plagued in the mind at times through dreams. Even Job spoke about that, you know, how when he looked to be comforted through his bed, he was tormented by dreams. This is all that process of being refined. See? That uh, uh, process can come through, you know, people, your boss on your job, your coworkers, your neighbors, shit, your family, your friends, or, you know, your children, your woman. See that? That's all a part of it, man. But we understand that ultimately, it's the Heavenly Father, Yahweh through his son, Yahweh Shah, which by the way is his hand, <laughs> you know, that's shaping and molding you, refining you, so that you could be presented as a vessel of honor at the return of our Lord, Yahweh Shah. That's the process, man, in which acceptable men is tried through that furnace of adversity. And again, who is that refiner? Well, it would be none other than our Lord, Yahweh Shah. So yeah, I just wanted to touch on that. Lord willing, it was edifying. Until the next time I say, Shalom.